Hey guys, welcome to our first of what will be our Ask the Trainer series on Instagram and YouTube, where you guys could ask us your questions, just submit them right on our website, and we're going to answer them one by one, each get their individual video. So for today's question, it's from listener Lisa. Lisa says, how do I fix food aggression in my 12-week-old golden retriever? I've always had goldens, but this is the first male. Is this a male trait? I've never seen any food aggression in my other five female goldens. He growls and lays over his bowl if we come near. This started about a week ago. So when we received this, we received this about a week ago. Yeah. So it looks like it's been going on for about two weeks now, and he's now 13 weeks old. So that sounds like food aggression. Yes, and it's not it's not uncommon. Uh, we see it, I wouldn't say quite a bit. I've uh, trained out probably five puppies within the last year uh, that have food aggression. Um, most of the time, it's purebreds because there are some genetic things that are going on, poor breeding. We don't have too much information on Lisa's puppy. We just literally have what she wrote to us in our in our email. Um, but I would definitely have some extra questions for her, like where he came from, you know, what kind of breeding was going on. It could be genetics or it could be just the way that he was raised from the time he was born with his siblings. Um, if he wasn't with mom for a long period of time or he wasn't with his siblings um, and maybe they were underfed, this has happened a lot. We actually trained a puppy um, a few months back named Millie who was around the same age, I would say. Yeah. Purebred, pit bull, uh, super cutie, um, cuddly. It was only when food was involved and when I asked mom you know, what the situation was and she did say, that uh, the people who had her were just poor. They were just uh, not responsibly breeding. Um, it wasn't planned, but it happened and they didn't have a lot of food. So there were really just, I think she said she would take a big bag and just throw it on the ground. And it was like, fend for yourself. And when puppies start to get a little bit older, um, around that seven, eight week mark, um, even in the six week mark, they are, they are understanding that food is obviously a resource and that it's necessary. And if there's lack thereof, especially during those weeks where they're starving all the right. time, um, they're going to realize like you have to fight for your food. So, um, I think that was what was going on with Millie. Obviously I'm using her as an example where now anytime anybody went near her food, she would growl. Um, and very intensely would focus on the food when she had it. Like if any noises were going around, she'd look up and she was very, very stiff. She was not relaxed while eating at all. Treats were fine. Um, no big deal there. But her food in general in a bowl was very stressful for her, especially when we put it in the slow feeder because we had to slow her down. She was eating too fast. She was getting even more frustrated because she felt like she just needed to eat so, so quickly. Um, so it's not a male trait. This happens in any gender of dog. Um, it really comes down to genetics or learned behavior from birth. It can be absolutely trained out, I think, with Millie, especially because they're these two dogs in particular are very, very young. So, um, you know, it's not like they're big and that, you know, it's unmanageable when they're puppies. It's, it's way, way easier to do. So I definitely suggest you tackling this very, very quickly, but it really comes down to, uh, making food a positive thing and, and people, other animals being around her food is a positive thing. We're never taking food away from her. This is not a dominance thing. We're not, um, forcing her into submission. Yeah, we're not yelling. Um, it, it, resource guarding could be a very emotional thing for the owners. Cause it's like, are you going to bite the hand that feeds you? Um, and then a lot of owners will turn to punishment, yelling, removing food altogether. And all you're doing is reinforcing those negative behaviors. Cause resource guarding in and of itself is an anxiety that you want to take away their resource. And without that resource, they know they're going to die. So the idea is when I'm around, when other animals are around, you get more of this resource. So there's a couple exercises that we do being that your dog is so young, it's a little more forgiving as far as, yes. you know, if you get bit uh, compared to a full size golden retriever. So if you have this issue at home and you have a much larger dog, I would definitely leave this to a professional. Yeah. You don't touch this. This right. is not for you. But with a puppy, you can you can try a couple exercises as far as um, I think hand feeding will be okay with a puppy from the beginning for you to do for sure. Yeah. And that's even a good way to avoid this from coming up as an issue for Lisa. She could definitely do an exercise where you, you could have the dog leashed up, have their bowl there, have them eating and then have somebody kind of reel them away from the bowl. They disengage with it. And then Lisa goes in and adds more food, but a higher value food. She could add cheese on top of the food. 
add peanut butter, something to make it really good. Make sure the dog sees that she's adding to it. She's putting her hand in the bowl. And then when she goes away, the dog will return and be like, oh, wow, this is actually better than it was. But you're never taking the bowl away. If you physically pick the bowl up and go away with it to add that special food, they're going to be freaking out. And that's a negative for them. The bowl stays where it is. It never comes into our possession in the beginning. Um, a lot of people want to like stop their dog from eating, pick their food up and then put it back down. You are creating more stress for this dog because now it's on edge every single time it's eating, thinking, well, they could take my bowl at any moment. Mm -hmm. So we need them to know that the food is theirs. It's not ours. It's dog food. Um, it's yours. So I'm not taking it from you. There's no need for you to feel stressed about this. And a lot of people want to say, oh, I can take my dog's food away. I can take its bone away. Don't do that. I, I know it in, in theory and on people on paper, it sounds like it makes sense, but to them, you are stressing them out for something that's not supposed to be stressful. Right. It's like putting too much emphasis on something and then you make a bigger problem out of it. So we want to avoid that. So you're, this is not a dominance thing. You are not alpha. Um, that theory doesn't exist. It's even actually exist. quite the opposite. Yes. Um, if your dog was confident and thought that it was dominant, it wouldn't be afraid that it wasn't going to get any more food. It wouldn't yeah. be afraid that you're going to take its food. This is an insecurity. Right. Exactly. So we hope that kind of helps you. If you want to reach out to us, set up a virtual training or some kind of consult where we can kind of guide you a little further. And if you're having this issue at home, you could reach out to us. We're training virtual. So anywhere in the United States or beyond, we can help you. We have clients all over the place now, yeah. all over the country. So it's very exciting. Yes. And then go ahead and you can go to the link in our bio on Instagram or possumuniversity.com and go to the Ask the Trainer page and you can submit your question for us. Until next week. Class dismissed.